video, we are going to look at a move that I think is just quintessential belly dance moves. I think there's like a handful of movements that you just have to know as a belly dancer. They're like required <laughs> for the art form. And this, my friends, is one of them. We are talking about the drop release. And this is a hip movement that comes up in, I would say, 99.99% of all the belly dance performances I have ever been to in my entire life. And that's a lot of belly dance performances. So let's go ahead and jump right into the drop release. This movement is just building off of our hip drop, the unweighted hip drop that we've previously played with. So hopefully you reviewed that and you know how that works because this is just adding a little bit of an accentuation. It's adding a release of the foot so the weight feels a little bit different, but that's all it does is add a release of the foot. Now, I say that's all it does. It actually feels a little bit more challenging than that when most people try to tackle it, which is why we're going to take some time to work on it today. So getting into just our unweighted hip drop and remembering what that's all about, right? So all my weight is on the back leg. I am squeezing with the front oblique and releasing, remembering that this drop is from up to neutral and not from up to down. Yeah, up to neutral. So that back leg stays nice and strong and it creates a nice stopping place on the way down for the hip. When I get into the release, what's going to happen is the foot is going to release, the unweighted foot is going to release on every other hip drop, but the hips keep dropping. So the hip keeps drop, drop, drop. This tempo doesn't change. What's going to happen is my right foot is going to release ever so slightly on every other one. Before we even do it, let me say, it is not a kick. Repeat after me. <laughs> it is not a kick. This is like the number one snafu most people fall into is it becomes like kind of this rockette sort of thing, right? It is not a kick. It's a release. So what we're going to think about is our big toe loves the floor. It wants to stay on the floor for as long as possible. Maybe it will lift from the floor just a little bit, but I like to think of it as sort of a dynamic tension between my hip and my toe. I'm going to get a tiny little bit of a release as I drop my hip. It's a funky thing at first, right? because you're dropping this hip down and extending the leg at the same time, right? As I do this, knees stay in alignment, feet stay in alignment. So we're not going to do any sort of like turning out with the hip. So we're not going to get like a drop back. We're not going to get a turn out in the leg. For today, we're going to keep the knees pretty much facing the same way, the feet pretty much pointing the same direction. And we're going to get a great leg workout on <laughs> the back leg, right? As we do this, because we will have literally no weight in that front foot. For me, when I do this over and over, I tend to not put any weight in the front foot at all. It helps keep me really balanced, right? Because if I were to shift weight into this foot and then release the weight, you can certainly do that and it is a great move, but then you're kind of working with your balance and shifting back and forth and depending on your balance that day, that may or may not be useful to you. So what I am choosing to do is to keep all my weight on that back leg the entire time for this variation. And I encourage you to try to do the same. If it works for you, feel free to hold onto a chair or a wall or something if that helps you balance. But I think about that back foot being big and flat on the floor. I think about there being three points on my foot, one under my big toe, one under my little toe, and one in my heel, like a triangle. And all parts of that triangle are smooshed into the floor to really create some good stability. You are going to want to be sure that your back knee is bent. No matter how tired your leg gets, keep it bent because that's going to prevent you from bouncing up and down. That happens when you straighten your leg. So I have that little micro bend, a tiny plie in my back leg and my front foot. I'm pretty much going from my toe to the release, toe to the release. You could certainly use the whole ball of the foot to the release and find what works best for you. Let's look at it on the other side. Exact same thing, but let's just tire out our other leg a little bit. So being sure that my weight is nice and evenly distributed throughout my foot. So I have maximum balance potential, right? Let's set ourselves up for success. And there's a little bit of a bend in that right knee. And now I'm squeezing and releasing in my left hip. And you're either on the ball of that foot or you can be on the toe, whatever works best for you. And every other, you're going to extend your foot forward like you're drawing a line, like you're pushing a penny on the floor forward like six inches, right? Maybe my toe comes off the floor a little bit, but I do not kick. There's no force in that movement, right? It's just a little, it's a little release. It's just a little extra bling on the movement, right? That doesn't really serve a purpose other than create line and beauty. And if you've got a skirt on, maybe give your skirt a little floof, which is really nice as well. 
Yeah. So you're going to feel this in your back leg. Make sure your knee of the back leg stays behind your toes. Make sure you stay nice and lifted. Like the more you are lifted, the more weightless you feel, the less pressure there is on your leg, right? So don't sit down into it because that's exhausting. Lift, 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 lift. Beam of light coming out of your head, right? To try to give your leg as much help as possible. And that hip, if you were looking at just that hip, right? If we had nothing else going on and all we can see is that hip, the hip's just going drop, drop, drop drop the quality of the 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 drop for now like when we're doing it with the foot on the ground or when we're doing it with the release is the same yeah we can certainly play with that but for now we're aiming to keep those drops nice and even when we release so now this is one of those that looks so simple but it is it's kind of weird and challenging uh, because it's counterintuitive I think to what our body wants to do and the foot just doesn't seem to want to make sense out of it. So it's just one of these nice, slow, steady practices. Feel free to take it slow, hold on to something for balance and just practice that mechanic of, you can think about even just stretching the knee or straightening the knee instead of thinking about lifting the foot or releasing the foot. Think about different ways of, of approaching it, right? But be sure that this is your main focus, right? This is what's important in the move. And maybe the footwork is really teeny tiny to begin with, right? So that you make sure you don't disturb the picture of what's happening here. And then maybe as you get more comfortable, you can release the foot a little bit more and start to play with it. But work slowly into it and make sure that the hip work doesn't suffer because the footwork is what you're concentrating on. Yes? So let's go ahead and try our drop release with music. Okay, here we go. Five, six, nice and slow. Let's just get that drop going here. And now with the every other release, nice and slow. Good. Drop, drop, release. So it's happening at the same time. Nice and small in the foot. Just a few more at this speed, and then we're going to try double timing. You might want to make everything smaller to get it to go fast, yeah? All right, here we go. Take it faster, here we go. Yeah, feel free to keep it slow if that's more comfortable. Let's do four more. All right, let's set up on the other side. Just drop. Now every other release, so it's one, two, three, four. The releases are almost always on the uh, even numbers, yeah? Drop, release, drop, release. You'll always start with a drop and then go into the release, yeah? A few more at this tempo. Keep breathing, nice, long arm, shoulders are rolled down, back away from the ears. All right, so let's go ahead and speed this up. Here we go, drop, 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 drop. Tiny little movement in the foot, don't make it a kick. Are you breathing? Is your leg tired yet? <laughs> Let's switch to the other side. Slow drop release. Let's double time. And slow it down. Let's switch to the other side. Here we go. Slow drop release. Let's do two fast. Slow it down. Speed it up, here we go. Switch side, slow. Let's speed it up, here we go. And slow it back down. Switch side, stepping back. Speed it up. Switch side, slow it down. Speed it up. Keep that chest nice and lifted. Nice job. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I can send you new belly dance content weekly. If you are ready to level up your belly dance skills and build upon what we've learned here today, then you should join me online on Teachable. Sign up now and get access to 10 free classes that will help you level up your belly dance technique. You can join me at sahirabellydances.com slash join me. I hope to see you there.